What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So a man gets caught running a Chinese bio lab in California. Yeah. So normally I wouldn't give a story like this the time of day, but I do think this story and what's happening in China with the health crisis that's going on over there right now with these new pneumonia, these pathogens, I think they're connected somehow. And I think they're connected to the 2024 election. Yes, that's right. The 2024 election. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't put anything past the establishment at this point. They are getting so desperate. They are so terrified of Donald Trump winning this election that they will stop at nothing. And yes, that includes creating a pandemic so that they can start the mass mail-in ballots again, just like the, the same play that they used in 2020. I don't put anything past these people, nothing. And I also don't believe in coincidences either. There are no coincidences when it comes to the Washington establishment's ability to retain power. So I just, I was going to hold off on this story that's with the health crisis happening in China until we got some more info, but I think I'm starting to see a pattern here. My brain's moving and I'm starting to link some things together and I'm sure you are too. So um, I'm, so I was just going to go ahead and dive right into this today and let you know what I think about the whole thing and what I think is happening. I think this is the Washington establishment's playbook. I think this is what is going to be their playbook for the 2024 election. They have to do something. They have to do something. There is no way they are going into this election with just Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. It's not going to happen. You see already how they're weaponizing the justice system to kneecap Donald Trump. Well, they're also going to do something else because they know that's not working. It's actually doing the opposite. So they're going to have to come up with another plan. And I think it's going to be as close to what they did in 2020 as far as getting the mass mail-in ballots. Because people need to understand without the Democrats cheating in elections the way that they do, as far as stuffing ballot boxes, just like we seen the video in Connecticut, just like we got a whole movie called The Thousand Mules or Two Thousand Mules, whatever it's called, from Dinesh D'Souza, that without cheating, they can't win elections. They certainly can't win elections on ideas. Nobody likes their ideas. Their ideas suck. Okay, their policies suck. So they have to come up with with little tricks and little sneaky moves to win elections. And that's exactly what Mark Elias does. That's what the DNC was doing. They did it back in 2016 with the Russian dossier, how they got the it was an entire government effort to manipulate the 2016 election. That's what that was. It was a dossier paid for by Hillary Clinton, the DNC, to kneecap Donald Trump and accuse him of being some type of Russian agent. It wasn't just the dossier. The dossier wasn't enough. They had to bring in the entire damn federal government. They brought in the intel agencies, the FBI, the Obama administration, Joe Biden. All these people knew that that dossier was fake from day one. How do we know this? From the Durham report. The Durham report, believe it or not, no one was arrested because of it, which is unfortunate. No one was held accountable for it, which is really unfortunate because now they're doing it again. But that Durham report spilt the beans on everything. That entire damn situation was nothing but a trick to kneecap Donald Trump and win an election. So they did it in 2016. We watched them do it in 2020. There's no reason to think why they're not going to do something insane in 2024, especially now that they see Donald Trump in all the polls. These people, like I said, they're going to get desperate. In the next coming months, you're going to see some stuff you've never seen before in your entire life. And in fact, I think Tucker Carlson said something similar. But before we get into that, I want to go in to what is happening in China in the first place with these pathogens. um, There's a surge in their respiratory illnesses and all that stuff. So I got an article here from the Epic Times hat tip to Dorothy Lee. China seeks more clinics to cope with surge of respiratory illnesses in children. The health system is under strain, so health officials didn't provide data during the November 26th news conference. Cases among children are notably prevalent in northern areas such as Beijing, and I'm a little rusty on my Mandarin, so the Liaoning province, (laughs) 
where hospitals are alerting the public about prolonged waiting times. The surge in infections is straining the country's health system, and Tianjin medical staff in Tianjin Children's Hospital's outpatient and emergency departments reportedly handle 10,000 to 12,000 visits daily. All right, so their health system is under strain right now. There's obviously a massive influx of respiratory illnesses, and it just so happens to be in children now. I find that, you know, awfully coincidental how the COVID-19 virus, children were hardly affected at all. Like, it, it, it's almost like children had a natural immunity to the virus from the very start. And then now this, this virus, which they say isn't a novel virus, they, they say it's not a new virus, that it's just a influx of different types of pneumonias. But I just find it awfully coincidental how now it's affecting the children. I don't know, folks. I don't know. So, but it's no wonder CCP is concealing data. So at the core of the concerns is whether novel pathogens have emerged in the recent illnesses. On November 22nd, the WHO asked Beijing for detailed information, noting that the media and ProMed, a public health surveillance system run by the International Society for Infectious Diseases, reported clusters of undiagnosed pneumonia among children in China. Quote, a key purpose was to identify whether there has been clusters of undiagnosed pneumonia in Beijing and Liaoning, as referred to in media reports, the WHO said in the statement. So they're not being honest with us. Again, it's almost like exactly what happened during COVID. They denied it. The virus was spreading all across the globe. China was like, I don't know what this is. This is, you know, we we got it under control here, you know, and then boom. The entire damn world is infected with COVID-19 that came from a lab in Wuhan and China lied and said it came from a fish market that was 300 feet away from a level three bio lab that researches coronaviruses. But it came from the fish market, folks, from a bat or some some crossbreed and a, a it, w- it went from animal to human. OK, that's what they wanted us to believe. And they still haven't been held accountable for that. The Biden administration has not done anything to China to hold them accountable for the millions and millions of people that are dead now from a virus that came from their country, from their lab. And it makes you wonder, like, okay, so why wouldn't you hold somebody accountable for that? Well, you probably wouldn't do it if it compromised you. And so I think. We have some big players like Dr. Fauci and all the other, the grants and and the millions and possibly billions of dollars that was going into gain-of-function research. I think the partnership between China and the United States and places like the the CDC and NIAID, all the money, I think there was a partnership between all these people and by holding China accountable would essentially unveil that the United States and these company and these institutions like NIAID and the CDC were culpable, were partners in the entire damn thing. So I think that's why China hasn't been held accountable for COVID. So anyways, so the Chinese communist regime has borne the brunt of global scrutiny and reporting outbreaks since 2003 when health experts accused Beijing of covering up the severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS epidemic caused by a previously unknown virus believed to have emerged from the southern Guangdong province before it spread to major Chinese cities and nearly 30 countries. So we always got viruses coming out of China. Always. This is nothing new. COVID was nothing new. This has happened multiple times before. So since another virulent respiratory disease appeared in central Wuhan city in late 2019, health experts and officials worldwide have repeatedly questioned the accuracy of the country's data. Earlier this year, as a massive wave of COVID-19 overwhelmed hospitals and funeral homes following the sudden lifting the sudden lifting of pandemic restrictions, the WHO once again appealed for transparency, stating that China's official tallies are underreporting the actual scale of the outbreak. I don't know, folks, it sounds pretty much like 2020 to me all over again. But you have to wonder like would they be that dumb to repeat the same tactic? Like really, I mean I don't know. I just don't think people are going to buy it unless it's actually a real virus that actually does create another pandemic that does actually start killing kids and and adults. 
essentially like COVID, but just as deadly for kids as it is for adults. It's almost like they tried with the first one, but because the kids were almost completely 100% immune to it and unaffected by it, then they created another one and be like, okay, this one, we're going to make sure it gets the kids. So it's like, it's like, what they're, what are they trying to do here, man? I don't put anything past these people. I really don't. You have a, a system of globalists. You have a regime of globalists that want control of the world and they're going to do it by hook or by crook. And it just seems like that they're trying to create chaos. They're trying to create a crisis because every time there's a crisis, somebody comes out on top with all the control, period. Whether it was the massive transfer of wealth that we've seen during the COVID pandemic, all the control that the government, not just our government, but all governments around the world got over its people. I mean, massive policy changes made. Election laws changed illegally weeks and months before the election. All these things happened because of the pandemic. So they used fear to, to gain a position. They used fear to gain power. Why? Because fear is very, very, people are very willing to surrender their liberties and freedoms in the face of fear. You know, courage is is something that's very lacking in our society today. So they are more than willing to trade their freedom for security. This is something that I think they know is a major weakness of people, of the human, of the human nature. And so that's why we have these insane viruses, these pandemics that just, and the media doesn't help. Why? Because the media is part of the whole damn thing. They may not know they are. I don't think Joe and Mika and Rachel Madcow realize that they're just helping the globalists. Maybe they do. I don't know. But the thing is, is they're certainly helping by pushing the fear. You guys remember during the 2019 and the 2020 election, the weeks and months leading up to it, they had the death tickers at the bottom of every single left-wing media outlet with all the people dying every single second. And then every single show was talking about how Trump was responsible for the pandemic. And so they used the pandemic to get Joe Biden across the finish line. They weaponized it by using fear-mongering, the death tickers, propaganda. And so that was very successful for them. So maybe they think that since it worked so well in 2020, they can use it again. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past them. Well, at the same time, they can't be that, I don't know, I always say this, but these people surprise me every time. I was going to say they can't be that brazen, right? But these people, I mean, they have, they have done some of the most brazenly stupid stuff I have ever seen. I mean, as, I mean, look what they're doing to the justice system to get Trump. Like, so, you know, I, I, I just don't, I won't say it. These people are willing to do anything. And right in front of people. They don't even care. They're, they don't even try to hide it anymore. So, you know, and Democrats, they're not as dumb as people think. They are very cunning and very, very evil. That is one thing we know for sure. But I just, you know, I can't get past on how all the previous virus affected almost everyone but kids. And now this virus affects specifically kids, overwhelmingly kids. Something just seems out of place with this entire scenario. So, and then also, you got to think President Biden just met with the Chinese leader. I don't know. It just sounds like Democrats are working on a plan to win this election. And I, I just don't know what it is yet. I, I don't know. And they, maybe they want it that way. You know, Democrats are very good. They don't, they will not reveal what their plan is. They won't. Where Republicans, they, they reveal it right there and out in the open for everybody. If they got a plan, they put it out there in the open so it gets stop blocked by people like, you know, uh, Perkins, Coy, Mark Elias. But anyways, this is going to blow your mind. So not only do we have China doing crazy stuff with viruses and pathogens, but at least it's over there, right? It's across an entire ocean. Well, how about this one? An owner of California Biolab has close ties to Chinese government military, a new House Select Committee report says. <laughs> this is insane. So the House Select Committee on the People's Republic of China announced on Wednesday that the owner of an illegal California Biolab allegedly has close ties to the Chinese government. So according to a report shared by the House Select Committee on the PRC, Jia Bei Zhu Again, with the Mandarin here, I'm a little rusty. 
uh, 62 years old, is a wanted fugitive from Canada and a PRC citizen. So he is he is a he is a Republic of China citizen that is a fugitive from Canada. Great. How did he get in here? Probably from our open borders. So authorities said that Zhu had previously stolen millions of dollars of intellectual property from American companies and was part of an ongoing trans transnational criminal enterprise with ties to the PRC. <laughs> Zhu, uh, I think it's Zhu, it's Z-H-U. Zhu, who went by a number of aliases, was arrested in October, oh, it's kind of like Joe Biden, was arrested in October for manufacturing and distributing and distributing misbranded medical devices in violation of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, the FDCA, and for making false statements to the Food and Drug Administration. So the FBI director says COVID pandemic most likely originated from Chinese lab. So Zhu's Universal Meditech Inc. lab in Redley, California, first raised eyebrows in December 2022 when code enforcement officer Jaslyn Harper noticed a green garden hose sticking out of a hole at the facility and notified Zhu of the code violation. So this this story actually did come out a while ago, last year. I remember them talking about this, but we didn't hear anything of it. It was just like, oh, they uncovered this bio lab and there was like live and dead rats in there that they were testing on vials of of unknown substances. And then that was it. No one talked about it. Well, the House Select Subcommittee did a full blown investigation. And this is what we got. It turned out it was a citizen from China that has ties to the Chinese Communist Party military that was a fugitive from Canada for stealing American intellectual property and created a bio lab in California. (laughs) I mean, does it get any worse? I mean, really? This stuff is terrifying to me. If the end of the world were to come, it is going to be from a bio weapon period. It's not going to be nuclear weapons. It's not going to be EMP. No, it is going to be from a bio weapon. Humans are going to destroy themselves with viruses. Why? Because they keep playing around with these things and poking and prodding. We have our side poking and prodding and playing God with pathogens for science. You have another side that is poking and prodding at pathogens to make a weapon. So it's like the the, the normal regular people you know, us, us innocent people here, the bystanders, we're not making out very well on this one. That's for sure. So further inspection found that the dinghy warehouse contained expensive laboratory equipment, manufacturing devices, and what appeared to be medical grade freezers. Harper observed several workers in lab coats who told her that they were PRC nationals. As she continued further in the vast warehouse, she noticed that some of the freezers and containment, u- and containment units had glass doors. Inside, she saw thousands of vials of biological substances. Many were unlabeled. Others were labeled in Mandarin or in code. <laughs> this is insane. So the city also found approximately 1,000 transgenic mice, mice used for research of human disease, which biolab workers told them were genetically engineered to catch and carry the COVID-19 virus. The mysterious discovery spurred a nine-month effort effort by the city of Reedley to address the public health risk found in the warehouse. The House Select Committee on the PRC said that local law enforcement attempted to contact the FBI and the CDC, but both federal agencies declined to investigate. What? How do you... (laughs) Like, what do we even pay these people for, man? You, you're sitting here, you find a bio lab where you got Chinese people in lab coats and vials of pathogens and mice and all this craziness happening, and you don't want to investigate it? Our three-letter agencies, our taxpayer-funded agencies, you know, the ones that are supposed to keep us safe and protect us from s- situations like this, they don't want to investigate it. In freaking credible man. Ah... <sighs> So ultimately, the local law officials contacted their local members of Congress, Representative Jim Costa, and asked him for help containing obtaining federal assistance. With Representative Costa's assistance, the CDC came to inspect the Reedley Biolab in May 2023. So he had to get a hold of a congressperson to finally get somebody over there. Wow. So based solely on reading the labels, the CDC reported that the facility contained at least 20 potentially infectious agents, including, get this, HIV, tuberculosis, and the deadliest known form of malaria. (laughs) The CDC also found a host of potentially infectious agents and separated them into two subgroups, risk group two and risk group three. 
The CDC defined risk group 2 as a human disease which is rarely serious and for which preventative or therapeutic interventions are often available. These agents represent a moderate risk to an individual but a low risk a low risk to the community. Risk group 3, however, is defined as pathogens associated with serious or lethal human disease for which preventative or therapeutic intervention may be available. These agents represent a high risk to an individual but a low risk to the community. Despite the admitted risks, the CDC refused to further investigate what appeared to be pathogens or biological samples in the unmarked containers in the biolab. Despite city officials offering to pay for the testing, the CDC still refused, the committee said. The CDC summarized its findings in a three-page report which stated that there was no evidence of select agents or toxins and had state and local authorities destroy the evidence from the facility subject to a court order, the committee said. You destroyed them? Like, what's going on here? This is the problem when you can't trust your government. This is the problem when you have government officials that get pushbacks and pay incentives from the Chinese government. This is exactly why you can't trust anybody. Our elected officials these days are so greedy and money hungry and power hungry and so just sucking on the tit of China for so long that they they do some of the most corrupt stuff. They put the American people last. They prioritize their own self-interest and the interests of China before the American people. So you destroyed all these pathogens and evidence. Like, maybe there needs to be more investigating, possibly. But no, a judge orders the destruction. Okay, great. Unbelievable. So the CDC ordered local officials to eradicate approximately 140 tons of general waste including complex laboratory equipment and 448 gallons of medical and biological waste. The committee noted that law enforcement given minimal guidance and federal experts on the disposing of biological waste. During the removal of the biological waste, local law official, local officials and contractors reported that they found a freezer labeled Ebola with silver sealed bags. Ebola? No way. The committee said that the CDC's refusal to test the pathogens found at the biolab makes it impossible for the select committee to fully assess the potential risks that this specific facility posed to the community. It is possible that there were other highly dangerous pathogens that were in the coded vials or otherwise unlabeled due to government failures we simply cannot know, the report said. What? Ebola? Folks, Ebola is off the chain deadly. It is one of the most deadliest viruses known to man. Like this, this thing has a 90% fatality rate. 90%. Ebola is insanely deadly. Oh man, dude. This, this is insane. So our government bureaucracy... This is what it seems like to me. It just seems like to me the the bureaucracy, the government bureaucracy is just getting so big and bloated that nobody even knows what the hell they're doing. Like you have so much money just automatically going and funding all these different projects and and different entities and everyone's got their own thing going on to a point to where nobody knows what the hell is going on. Nobody knows what they're doing. They just, oh, just cut them another check. This is what happens with continuing resolutions, the CRs that we're always talking about. A CR is essentially the continuation of just funding all this stuff over and over and over again. And we haven't passed, we haven't done a real budget since the 90s. It's been CRs for the last three decades. So this is exactly the type of stuff that happens. So you're, you're sending all this money out to organizations you have no idea what they're doing. And the next thing you know, you have a, a company that has Chinese nationals working on deadly pathogens. And the CDC only investigated when a congressperson got involved. And then didn't really investigate it, just burned everything and destroyed all the equipment and evidence. This is so insane. So there's so much red tape that you can't even get answers for anything either. I don't know. I, if, for anyone new that's listening, I work for a government entity. And 
I won't tell you which one because people out there are nuts and they'll try and get me fired or they'll or something worse. Who knows? These government agencies, they are so big and bloated that nobody is held accountable for anything. You can't get answers for any type of question you have. Anytime you have a question, you have to keep going up and up and up. You will go in circles trying to find an answer to something. Nobody's held accountable for anything, right? Nobody is a decision maker, okay? Nobody has complete authority. Everything, it's ran like the military. There's different classes. There's different pay scales. There's different tours and everything, right? But the problem is with something so big and bloated is nobody knows what the hell they're doing and nobody's held accountable when something messes up. So like, you know, the old saying crap runs downhill. Well, that's exactly what happens. So when something at the bottom messes up, the people at the top just keep going down, down, down and down and down until the very bottom. So the person at the bottom gets blamed for stuff that he didn't even do. And same thing the opposite way. So you try and get an answer for something. You can't get a definitive answer for nothing. You you cannot. Like nobody's nobody has the answer for anything because nobody wants to be held responsible for giving you that answer. It's just a huge mess. And so this is what I think is happening to our government with a, when, this is what happens when your federal government has a spending problem. Is you just don't know anything. So I before I okay, so I want to get back into this real quick. This is getting behind here. So I got the I have the select committee report. So the investigation into the Ridley Biolab. So Chairman Mike Gallagher, this was just released on the 15th, but I, I didn't hear anybody talking about it. So Chairman Mike Gallagher of the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party unveiled a report on its investigation into the illegal people's the illegal People's Republic of China tied biolab discovered in Reedley, California. The members were joined by Representative Jim Costa, a Democrat whose district includes Reedley, California, former Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Representative Dan Newhouse, and Representative Neil Dunn. So Reedley city, city officials, Jaslyn Harper, Nicole, joined the event remotely. Okay, we yeah, all this other stuff. So retired Colonel Robert Kaldek, MD, a biosecurity expert, discussed the national and public health risks of this biolab operating illegally on U.S. soil. And here is what the committee found. So bullet point one, the illegal bio lab was run by a PRC citizen who is a wanted fugitive from Canada with a a $330 million Canadian dollar judgment against him for stealing American intellectual property. The PRC citizen was a top official at a PRC state controlled company and had links to military civilian fusion entities. The illegal biolab received millions of dollars in unexplained payments from PRC banks while running the illegal biolab. So this this lab was getting paid from China as they were working and poking and prodding on deadly pathogens in the United States. I'm just shocked. Like, and what's even more shocking is the CDC didn't see anything wrong with this when they were told about this. When they were told, hey, we have a, an illegal bio lab that's being run by a bunch of Chinese nationals that's getting paid from China, I think you probably should investigate it. They're like, nah, we're good. Like, what? <laughs> the illegal bio lab contained thousands of samples of labeled, unlabeled, and encoded potential pathogens, including HIV, malaria, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis? That's insane. And COVID. Can you imagine having a tuberculosis uh, pand- or epidemic again? We've had one before in this country, but I mean, it is, you know, it's, it's curable, but I mean, are we really, I mean, it's almost like we're declining into another third world country because you know, all these illegals coming across the Southern border, they're not vaccinated for any of this stuff. And so you're going to start seeing tuberculosis and wild viruses and diseases we haven't seen in a long time. You're going to start seeing that stuff pop up around the country. Watch. The bio, um, so the illegal bio lab also contained a freezer labeled Ebola, which contained unlabeled sealed silver bags consistent with how the lab stored high-risk biological materials. Ebola is a select agent with the lethality rate between 25 to 90 percent. Yeah, I knew it was, I knew it was in that range. The bio lab contained nearly a thousand transgenic mice. Okay, lab workers said that the mice were designed to catch and carry the COVID-19 virus. After local officials who discovered and sought to help from the CDC and others, the CDC refused to test any of the samples. 
yeah, that pretty much covered everything in the story. But that's insane. What gets me the most is the Ebola. Like, are we really, do we really have Chinese nationals with an illegal bio lab in California trying to weaponize Ebola? Like, that is insane. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, my God, man. So Ebola, let's just do this real quick. The Ebola virus disease, once known by Ebola hemorrhagic fever, is defined by the iconic hemorrhagic fever. But more common symptoms are nonspecific such as fever, malaise, headache, diarrhea, or vomiting. The disease can quickly progress to multi-organ system failure, leading to shock, followed by death. The case fatality rate ranges from 25 to 90 percent. The average case fatality rate is about 50 percent. The range is dependent primarily on the type of strain of the Ebola virus. The deadliest strain being the Zar, Z-A-I-R-E, the Zare Ebola virus. The main variables impacting survival rate is early identification of disease and access to health care for patient stabilization and supportive medical care. This is insane. So they're messing with a virus in a secret biolab in California that has a 50% average fatality rate. So that and mind you, COVID-19 had less than a 1% fatality rate. Less than 1%. Well, let's see here. Hey Siri, what was the lethality rate of COVID-19? Estimates of case fatality rates for COVID-19 range from less than 1% in some nations to approximately 15% in others. That's insane. All right, all right. So you're talking about a virus that has a 50% average. It can be up to 90%. And COVID-19 was less than 1%. So can you imagine the carnage, the death that would come from an Ebola, a weaponized Ebola virus? And mind you, this lab was in the United States. Like, why isn't China working on this stuff in China? <laughs> I think you know the answer. Like, they are, they are poking and prodding at these things and doing their gain-of-function research here because they don't want the viruses to escape there. So let's just let the virus escape here in the United States that has a 90% fatality rate. Like, my God, man. Insane. And so it makes you wonder, like, is gain of function still happening in this country? Because to me, that is the dumbest, the dumbest. I don't even have to think about it. Some people you ask them, hey, is gain of function research, you know, is it, is it beneficial? Is it a net positive or a net negative? I don't even have to think. It is a dumb idea. It's a net negative all the way around. I don't see anything positive enough coming from gain of function research, essentially playing God with, with pathogens and viruses to justify taking that type of risk of releasing accidentally a virus that has a 90% fatality rate. Like, that, it's not even worth it to me. You know, I could see where some people might say, yeah, it's worth it because it helps you create vaccines. Well, you wouldn't need vaccines if you're not sitting here crossbreeding freaking deadly pathogens and creating a super virus. Like, you wouldn't need a vaccine for a super virus if you weren't messing around trying to create a super virus to begin with. Like, it, to me, it's a no-brainer. A very, very dumb idea. And in fact, it seems like it's something out of a end-of-the-world novel. Like, something out of the book of Exodus. Like, that, it seems like some end-of-the-world Armageddon-type scenario would happen from doing exactly what gain-of-function research does. but. Lo and behold, we're still doing gain of function in the United States. And yes, you're still paying for it. So I got an article here. I wanted to dig into this real quick. I got an article from Forbes magazine, hat tip to Steven Salzberg. And this is from October 2022. Gain of function experiments at Boston University create a deadly new COVID-19 virus. Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> So after all the controversy over the past few years about gain-of-function research on viruses, especially COVID-19 virus, I thought this kind of work was on hold, at least in the U.S. Indeed, the controversy grew so hot that the NIH issued a statement in May of 2021 declaring that it wouldn't support such work. 
Nonetheless, some scientists continue to pursue gain-of-function work. In a new study just released on the preprint server BioRix, a group of virologists at Boston University did the following. They took the spike protein from the Omicron BA1 strain of SARS-CoV-2, the strain that spread throughout the world last winter, often slipping past the protection offered by the vaccines, and combined it with an early 2020 strain of the COVID-19 virus. This experiment gave them a brand new, never-before-seen strain of COVID-19. Was it more deadly? You bet. <laughs> In their experiments, the BU scientists infected laboratory mice with the original Omicron virus, which caused mild, non-fatal infection, in quotations. But when they infected mice with their new recomb recombinant virus, which they called Omni-S, 80% of the mice died. And to quote their article, here it is right here, quote, the Omicron S carrying virus inflicts severe disease with a mortality rate of 80%. Well, that's just great. Making matters worse, the researchers found that the new recombinant virus also replicated much faster in mice. Quote, Omni-S infected mice produced 30-fold more infectious virus particles compared to Omicron infected mice. Yes, you read that right. Omni-S might grow 30 times faster than the garden variety Omicron strain. <laughs> Folks. Folks, like I said, this gain-of-function research is the dumbest, the dumbest stuff we could ever, ever do. So, and the benefits, there must be some pretty major benefits to offset this risk, right? Well, not exactly. The researchers said that these experiments show that, path now it's going to be getting into medical terminology here, my God. Researchers show that these experiments show that the pathogenicity, frick, I can't even pronounce that word, of the COVID virus is determined primarily by something other than the spike protein. That's a pretty narrow finding, and the authors don't seem to consider that they might have learned this without creating an entirely new, more lethal virus. Does this work violate the NIH policies? The NIH director has stated that, quote, neither NIH nor NIAID have ever approved any grant that would have supported gain-of-function research on coronaviruses that would have increased their transmissibility or lethality for humans. First, let me point out that this is a very narrow statement. The NIH doesn't deny that it funds gain-of-function work on viruses, because it does. They even put a pause on such work for three years, but they lifted it, regrettably, in 2017. I wrote about it at the time. The article's called NIH Reopens the Door to Creation of Super Viruses in December of 2017. So this guy wrote about this <laughs> before, before the COVID pandemic ever happened. So, like, when people realize what the government's doing with their money and gain-of-function research, playing God, poking and prodding at pathogens, like, every rational, normal human being would probably agree that, yeah, that's kind of a bad idea. Maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't be messing around with these things. Just going to throw that out there. How many movies do we have to see where the, the zombie apocalypse uh, is brought forth to this world? because of some type of virus that escapes from some lab that's doing research to make a weaponized virus more lethal or something like that. Like, it is right out of some type of horror flick, all right? So I just don't think it's a good idea, and I'd really appreciate it if they just stopped doing gain-of-function. Honestly. So, uh, of course, and the worst thing is you can't get any honesty out of the government. I mean, look at Dr. Fauci, man. This guy lied, he lied, and he lied right to our faces about EcoHealth Alliance, Biolabs in China, their, their partnership, the funding, the grants, what is gain-of-function and what isn't gain-of-function. He had all of his people at NIAD and NIH, where his wife works, by the way. So he's the head of NIAD or was, and she's the head of NIH. And he had all these people essentially redefine what gain-of-function research is so that he wasn't charged with perjury for lying to Congress. So, like, this guy is a very sneaky weasel. He's very sneaky. He's like the Merrick Garlands, the Mayorkas, the Bidens. They're all sneaky, corrupt little weasels, man. They are the worst of the worst people in our government, and they are the ones that bring forth the pain and misery the American people are feeling today. Dr. Fauci messing around with gain-of-function research, 
partnering with China, partnering whatever it was that he was doing that he denies he was doing that brought forth the um, precursors to the apocalypse. All right. And then now all of a sudden, two and a half years later, in the same exact time, 12 months up until the election, we have another health crisis breaking out in China from a virus, from a illness, a respiratory illness, just like COVID, from a respiratory illness that affects children now because the last respiratory illness didn't affect children as much. So that's why I say, like, could they be that brazen to repeat the same playbook as they did in 2020? Absolutely. Do I think that's what this is? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just wanted to I wanted to give the story to you so that you guys are aware what is happening with China. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's one thing I say on this show the most, there is no coincidences, man. There's no coincidences when it comes to the Washington establishment and their craving thirst to retain power. They will do anything. In fact, it's the very first thing I thought of when the first pandemic happened. When COVID first came around, I said, all right, what are the Democrats up to? I knew the Democrats were up to something. I knew it. And I, even to this day, would not be surprised if 20, 30 years down the road, we find out that the Democrats purposely released COVID in that lab. Like, I could totally see it. A report coming out 30 years from now where there was a a U.S. spy that snuck into the Wuhan lab in, in China and busted a vial of COVID-19 onto the ground or purposely injected it into a worker there or something in order to get the pandemic going so that the Democrats can do exactly what they did, use the media to push massive propaganda and fear mongering onto the people fear the people into surrendering their freedoms and liberties, watching the largest transfer of wealth in human history, watching the middle class absolutely get destroyed while the big corporations made out like bandits. I mean, just some of the stuff, the election process, it completely, completely changed our election system. This is why we have election uh, election quarter now. We have three months of elections now instead of election day. This happened because of the pandemic. You notice how you've never had election month. It's always been election day for your entire life up until the 2020 election. Yeah, that's why I would not be surprised at all if years down the road, it turns out that the Democrats were behind the pandemic somehow, some way. It wouldn't surprise me at all. I'll be dead honest. Can I prove any of that now? No, but I think we all kind of get the gist of what happened in 2020. The, the, all of it, we have all the facts. We have all the information. The only thing that you can't determine at this point definitively is was it on purpose or was it on accident? And obviously they want to say that it's not on purpose because that would be an act of war. And they're going to continue saying it was on accident. But the brazen lies that they told the American people um, is, well, first of all, you have the Chinese, uh, the Chinese government lying to our U.S. officials. Then you have the U.S. officials like Dr. Fauci and, and all the people at the top and the top uh, in the Washington establishment lying to the American people. If not for Donald Trump, we, we wouldn't know anything that we know today. And what's wild is Donald Trump was right on 95% of the stuff that he was saying, talking about uh, hydroxychloroquine. You guys remember that? You guys remember the um, ivermectin, the horse paste. Remember when uh, Donald Trump was talking about ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine? And then if you took ivermectin, you were stupid because the media uh, accused you of taking horse paste. And what do we know now? Ivermectin, one of the key medicines that's prescribed to people with COVID. It's just unbelievable. But again, they used the pandemic as a tool, as a weapon to bludgeon Donald Trump and get Joe Biden across the finish line. Is that what we're watching unfold in China again? I don't know. But at least now you know, so you're aware of it. So keep an eye on this story because it's, you're going to start seeing this evolve. You're going to start seeing the mask stuff coming back. You're going to start seeing all this. They're going to start hyping this up. And you're going to start seeing states reintroduced COVID restrictions again. They're, they're going to try and do it again, folks. 
But I think if you are prepared with the truth and the facts beforehand, you won't make the same mistakes again. A lot of people surrendered their freedom for security. I get it. It's a human reaction to want to do that. You know, it, it's, it's what they did. They took advantage of people's sympathy. All right. And an advantage of people's kindness. They did. They did. And they used the pandemic for political purposes. They politicized the pandemic. It didn't have to be political, but that's exactly where they took it. They wanted it to be political so that they can use it to win Joe Biden the election. Joe Biden did not win the election. The media won it. He stayed in his basement. Is that what they plan on doing again? I don't know. Only time will tell, but at least you're up to date with what's going on. So let me know what you think. Do you think the Democrats are using another respiratory illness to try and sway the 2024 election? Are Democrats using the same playbook? Send me an email, stephentoriellashow at gmail.com. And also, if you could, leave a review on the show, on the podcast. That really helps the show out when you leave reviews. Apple Podcasts likes it when the audience engages and leaves reviews and comments and all that good stuff. So if you could, I really appreciate it. Leave a five-star for the show. And... Also, like and share the show with your friends and family. That helps most of all. The same as following me on the social media platforms, following me on Rumble, especially Rumble. I want to focus a lot of content on Rumble. I Just follow me on all the social media accounts. It really helps out the show. It helps, it helps spread the show out there because they don't. the algorithm doesn't toss the show around. You know that. I know that. So we have to work a lot harder to get our content out there. Because of the algorithm and the this situation that we're in as far as only one side getting their content spread by the algorithm. And now that we're coming up to election time, Google and the uh, search engine manipulation is going to be full blown. And that's another topic that I want to get into on the next show. Um, so make sure you tune into that one. But yeah, if you could leave a review, it really helps the show. I really appreciate it. Send me an email, stephentoriellashow at gmail.com. And as always, I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.